we'd like to thank all the people supporting all the the effort to turn out tonight, and uh, I hope you enjoy your evening. There will be pies and pea, it's uh, sometime during the evening, pies. and there's a, a raffle for anybody that wants to buy tickets. So uh, that I'll ask uh, Jim and his team if you'd like to give us a wee brief talk about what they're doing at the club. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, I hope you have a nice night. Uh, obviously I'm the manager and I'm here to take your questions, good and bad. Feel free to ask anything you like. Uh, I'll, I'll try and give you as honest an answer as possible. Uh, I believe in not uh, dressing things up. I'll tell you how it is. Uh, that's, I wear my heart on my sleeve and that's, that's the way I am. I'll pass you on to Jerry. Good evening everybody. Uh, Jerry McCabe, I'm the assistant manager, and that's uh, the title self explanatory. Just here, your assistant manager, and the football affairs of the club, and deal with coaching, the training, and deal with difficult players like Beanie. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, that's uh, my job, as I say, as assistant manager, just you, your assistant manager. Put you on to Ryan now. Oh, I've been at Queen's for four years now and I'm enjoying my time here. Ian yeah. uh, you know, Russell, also a player, um, just sitting in the club in the summer. Um, and Feel free to ask any questions. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, Ross Hughes, uh, sports scientist. Again, sports science, it's a new, kind of new thing that's kind of come into the game in Scotland and no doubt everybody's got a lot of questions to ask you know, about it, things that we do with the players and sort of new strategies and new sort of scientific principles that we try to put in place at the club. So if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to ask. And I, I'm the same as the manager, I'll, I'll answer them as honestly as I can. And um, hopefully you'll be happy with the answers that I give. Alright, uh, Ross Wiesland, I'm the club physio. I've only been here a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I basically just treat and look after the boys in the week. And Beanie's basically care up five days a week. Well, I've got to say, Beanie does love the massage bed. <laughs> he is, uh, he's partial to getting some uh, contact, aren't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for that introduction, guys. And I'll just hand you up to Gary here to put some of the questions for the audience. How are you? <laughs> right, folks, so we're going to have a question and answer session. Um, hopefully, all the questions that you have will be productive and you'll look for a, you know, an honest answer, as uh, Jim and the boys said. Uh, so, has anybody got any questions? Uh, just raise your hand, I'll bring you the microphone and you can ask. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's right, so if you'd just like to say your name and then ask a question. Um, Windsor, um, why, why don't you do more training down in the pitch here at Hamilton? Something that was why, why do you not do any more training on the pitch? Great question. Well, first and foremost, we have excellent facilities at Broadwood, uh, which we also have a tie-in for the sports science side of things because it's a state-of-the-art gym. The other thing is, if you are asking, nearly every club in this league pays round about the same money. There's some clubs that pay bigger salaries, but in the, in the main, I would say about eight, nine of the clubs pay round about the same salary. And if I'm going to attract a player and I'm giving them the same money as another club, because generally there's two and three clubs in for the same players at, at first division level, then they're not going to do the hour and a half commute each way. They are going to sign for another club. That's the that is the biggest reason for not training in Dumfries. We have trained more this year down in Dumfries than what you did last year. Would that be right, Guff? Right. Yeah. We we have uh, we have done that. It's uh, a fantastic pitch of the problem, is that what Yes. Saying? Yeah, it's an astroturf as well. Uh, it's an excellent astroturf. It's one of the best in Scotland. But the, the whole reason of that. We moved away from Glasgow Green because Glasgow Green, to be quite honest, was just not good enough. And they weren't even giving us proper proper pitches. We were asked to train in between the pitches and I felt it wasn't good enough. And with us moving to a 3G surface, it was important that we got a 3G surface to train on. So that that is the reason for that. But we do, we are training a 
bit more down here. Not on a regular basis, I grant you that. It's but that's the biggest reason is to attract players. Cheers, Jim. Uh, anybody else would like to ask a question? Rob? Is there an actual difference in our pitch than the one in Trina? Because for the last two home games, I've noticed we Danny slipping all the time. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. trying to speak for shooting mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the footballer's right down here. I know it's a dark question. I'll probably hit you as well. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It's not a daft question. It's about balance. Uh, the pit, the pitch uh, that we've put in, there is a slight difference to the one at Broadwood. The one at Broadwood stands up a wee bit more. But when initially when that pitch was laid, then it was standing up fine, and then it started to lie flat. Now we've got the proper brushes in, and and it's starting to stand up a bit better now. But I think with the, the inclement weather. Last week it was really slick, really wet, and the ball was really skidding off it. And the wee man was struggling to keep his feet. Players, players can have days like that. I think he wore blades last week as well, if, if I'm not mistaken. So whether that was a case, I did question him <laughs> severely why he was on his backside so much. <laughs> well, well, I think he's seen the. Uh, the real Danny Kermetti today, I think we've seen a fantastic performance for the wee man. He was very dynamic. He, uh, he took on board what we were asking him to do because the, the front four or five players, depending on what system we play, I want them to go and express themselves and take people on. I will not be happy if you don't go and try and create something. That's something I say to them all the time. I don't care if you lose the ball trying to take a man on. You know, but if you're if you're not want to take a man on, then there's no point you've been on the park. That's 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 their job in the system is to go and create, score goals, create goals, and entertain the public. We have a question. Ian, how how did you miss that chance? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Two in a lot. Two in a lot. Ah, so that was the pitch. As I got thought about the pitch, I didn't set up the pitch right. Uh, so. <laughs> Continuing what you've just been saying, do all the players wear the same kind of boots? Because, like Danica Michael, just slip quite a lot, and who he sells are. So, as a certain type of boots you should be wearing. I mean, I know you all like to wear your different colours and your bright boots. I don't get that. I know where that is. Some of the Astro Tufts actually only allow you to wear a certain type of stud, uh, like uh, a moulded stud, or uh, I don't think they allow mixed studs. No, they don't allow blades, simply because I think the blades are a larger surface area at the bottom, so obviously there's more chance of sliding. Uh, but to be honest, I just wear uh, moulded. I think most of the boys go with a moulded stud on that because you can't wear studs, obviously, because it's too hard a surface and it. Uh -huh. It's right your feet. Do you know if you, if you look back to when it was a grass pitch, I'm sure there are players that you thought, my God, he was always on his backside today. What, what was he wearing on his feet? I don't think it's just because it's an astroturf. I think from time to time, when you do get slippy conditions, players struggle to keep their feet. You know, last last week was case in point. You know, he was never today it was a dry it was a dry day and he was never on his back once. No, and, it, and it, he wore and he wore the same boots. He wore the same boots. So, but we uh, to, to further answer your question, we send out, you know, a memo to all the clubs telling them what footwear footwear is appropriate and what isn't for uh, the Astro Turf pitches because you're not allowed to wear like, a metal stud on it. So it's got to be a a, a, a nylon stud. You know, at, at worst, you know, you can't can't even on the old fashioned six stud show. And, and somebody says, I mean, has the pitch still got to be watered and yeah, 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 yeah we we want to stop. Aye, stop then. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll no, you're right. The pitch is we we water the surface yeah. before every game because we want it to be slick for the players. Because we want we want to have a passing style and move the ball quicker. If the pitch is dry and it 
the one thing with the Astros, it can dry out quick when there is a wind, which mm -hmm. there was today. It was today. So it can dry out quick, which makes it sticky because yeah. the rubber on the rubber coating on the ball and the rubber on the surface. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can see it when it bounces, it kind of yeah. checks a wee bit, you know. But that happens in the grass part as well if it's a dry pitch. Yeah. So it's just it's just yeah. the way it is. It's actually it's a really good happy. question that because <laughs> see when you wet the surface, uh -huh. it makes a massive difference mm -hmm. in passing the ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many teams last year actually yeah. wet the pitch at half time? There's a there's a reason for that as well. You've got to watch for health and safety. Yeah. Because we asked my groundsman at Dunfermline to do it, make sure he sold the pitch at half time. But because it was the, the way they were set, it would get into the crowd. So then it makes the terrace and slippy, and then that becomes a health and safety issue, which they could get sued about. So you've got to be careful with that as well. It takes too long for it to circulate. It takes 20 minutes to go around. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's another reason. There's another reason. Now you just leave the boys during the game. Get on the train. What's the difference between that? You wouldn't get beaten out. Don't know. Has anybody got any other questions? Yes. You're looking to bring in any new player from January. How many of those got? No, I think uh, as a manager you're always looking to strengthen your side, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, I believe we've got a very good squad here. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I would like to add to that, of course I would. Uh, whether whether the funds are there to do that, then we'll see. You know, But as a manager, coaching staff, the people who scout games f for myself and the team, then we're always keeping a check on what's out there, what's happening. And, you know. If there's going to be any players becoming available that could, we think could help help the good players that we already have. I think maybe to elaborate on that as well, um, you said about buying players and things, the players that you've got at the moment, um, do you feel that there's weaknesses and strengths that you, you know, strengths that you can build on and, and weaknesses that you need to recover in January? Without a shadow of a doubt, I think there's strengths and weaknesses with every team that you take on. I think Champions League teams are strengths and weaknesses. You know, it's my job as a manager and, and Jerry's job as a coach is to improve the players. That's my job, it's to, to get result. Biggest thing about being the manager of a football club is getting a result on a Saturday. And we've not had enough of them, especially at Palmerston. You know, but the performance level has been very good at times. But we've just not been ruthless enough in front of goal to get the points that some of our players deserved. There's been certain occasions like Cowden Beath where it, it wasn't acceptable. We, we weren't good enough. And sometimes you've just got to hold your hand up to that and say, it's got to be better, lads. You know, it's, it's got to be better. Alawa at home, we never created much. That was after the extra time and they had the extra time. And it just looked like two teams that were out on their feet on the on the day. And you might turn around and say, well, he's a professional footballer. How how he how he's tired on the Saturday. I'm not saying we're tired, but there was just a lack of quality for both teams on the day. That's that's football when you're going to get that. Okay. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Yes. Hey, Louise Curry, I'm just wondering if you what you think of some of the young team coming through. Whether any of them are going to move move up. Well, we we definitely have got some decent young players. You know whether they make a step up is the unknown, you, you, you just, there's no guarantees. What I will say is, if you look at two goal scorers today, yeah, they've come through the system, which is really pleasing, really, really uh, pleasing. Uh, we've got young Aidan Smith and Scott Hooper up, training with us every day just now. And, and they're taking a while to adjust to get into that, but we, we do believe that they have a future, but there's no, there, there isn't any guarantees, you know. It's, you, you bring them along, and I'm a great believer if if, if you're good enough, you're, you're old enough, you know. And they've been playing in the reserve games, which I think is better than playing at their own level at under 19s because it's taking them out of their comfort zone, you know. If, I'm not saying the under 19s or the under 17s isn't a good level, but it's good to test them, it's good to put them against some men, if you like, you know, to see how they handle that. Because, you know, at 18, 19, you should be sniffing around that first team. You should be there or thereabouts. And it's it's really pleasing to see young McShane, who's had a terrible year last year with injury, and he didn't have a contract when we first came in, you know, progress, and he's played a lot of the football this year, and we think he's got a bright future. So that, that's credit to the people 
and the, the coaching staff here who have brought him through, you know, through the levels, because he's been here since a boy, so that's really pleasing. Anybody else that would like to ask a question? Yes, sir. <coughs> Well, I think we're definitely getting the infrastructure right. You know, I think we're laying the new surface. You know, I think it's definitely the way to go. Where, you know, in the, for a provincial club, and what we're doing across the road is fantastic. You know, that that will keep the club going for years and years. And the most important thing is the club. You know, managers, players will come and go, but you know, the, the lifeblood is the, the club keeps going. And I think uh, the board deserve enormous credit because you've got to remember it's only a couple of years ago where things were very precarious. As they are all in Scotland. Yeah, they are, but, but, <coughs> but Queen and South have turned that right round. Right round. You know, the club is no debt, so it, that, that, that's that's fantastic. You know what they've what they've achieved in a short space of time, and not just achieved that, they then took it on to the next level by building the facilities. Of, Across the road and, and having this pitch here, which will have future income and it will just it will keep bringing money in. So, a great bit of foresight for the for the chairman and board of directors. So, do you see that having a long term benefit to the player? Of course, of course. The, if they're making money elsewhere and bringing money in, then hopefully that that lets us go and get extra players and furthermore improve the, the squad that we already have. And, and then it's, it's up to us to put that on a park and make it work. Cheers. Um, sorry, we've got a question at the back here from uh, Stuart Lane. Hello. Um, one of the questions I was going to ask was that I'm involved in local youth football. Now, I heard Billy Dodds one day in the radio talking about the dropout of youth players that go to senior clubs and then fall away. When were all yous, or when was the first time you came into contact with senior football? And what age do you think that kids should be brought in to senior clubs if they're good enough? Well, I was a, I was a, on trial at Dundee United Parks when I was 15. Uh, it was five, five for my team, uh, the Barton United Boys Club. And I was told I wasn't good enough, I was too small. They just didn't hit the mark basically. You went, you went and trained a couple of times a week with each club uh, and I ended up being a joiner with my father for three years. So I was 19 uh, when I took the decision. I could have signed for Clyde Bank as part time but I took the decision to go down to Bristol City for a trial and, and that's where my career started. So I never had any dealings with, with pro youth football. Uh, I had to go out and work for a living. And I've honestly got to say it's the best thing I've ever done because getting three years on a building site, and don't get me wrong, I love my job, but getting three years on a building site gave me that hunger and desire that when I got an opportunity I wasn't letting it go. And for then I, my career just progressed, you know, so it, it was great for me. Jerry, you, Jerry went down a, a different, <coughs> different road. Well, when I was 17, I joined Hibs, but they didn't have a sort of a youth set up. They'd maybe under 12s, under 14s, then it was you know, either in the reserves or in the first team. And when I went there, you know, it, it, fantastic team at the time. I mean, I was playing in reserve football when I was 17, 18, with guys like Joe Harper, Pat Stanton, you know, and it, it was just fantastic. You know, it, just to train with these guys and play with these guys. But unfortunately for me, you know, I never, I never got the chance at the first team because they had so many good players. But it was a great experience, but I left and I went to Canada. And two years later, I think I joined, a year later I joined Clyde. But I missed out on the youth development. But now I think every club's got youth development and it's so important. I mean, you look at every setup now, you know, Scotland, you know, most teams in Scotland can't buy players now. Gone are the days where the old firm were buying, buying in big players. You know, even Celtic, and now you look at Celtic, they're a breeding ground for everybody else. They develop, they bring in players and develop them and move them on, is what you've seen. But it's it's and you know, they got a better chance at smaller clubs to try and come through, and you know a, a club like Queen of the South, we're saying we've had young Aidan Smith, uh, Scott Hooper, guys like that who have been playing under 19s, and they find themselves in the reserve team, then training with the first team, and that's you know obviously the manager got a reputation for that, and we say if we get they'll get the opportunity, that's for sure, they get the opportunity uh, uh, the smaller than I say the so-called smaller clubs, 
and it's great, you know, you, you've got to have this, you've got to have this in Scottish football, and there's a lot of great talent out there, it's just getting them into your club and giving them the opportunity. You can't make them players, you give them the platform, and it's up to them once you get them in. Well, you just uh, from the players' uh, point of view, you know, your experiences in coming through. I think uh, KB's right. I think probably now is probably the best time for a for a youth player to be coming through in Scotland. KB was here, but I, I was 16. I was at Rangers, but like KB said, I was there when it was they were spending a lot of money, bringing in spending millions of pounds. I was never ever going to get a chance to be playing, never going to get near the first team. So now is the best time to be a young boy and going into a club at 16 year old and try to develop. Um, get their chance in a, in a first team. Um, so to answer your question, I think that now at 16, now for boys to try and get into clubs, it's the best opportunity to go and make a career and get first team football. Uh, I, mean, I played local football uh, with Grayson Rovers and Call Side and things like that, uh, but senior football I played with Anna and Athletic, which are local side obviously. And, uh, I decided I'd been offered a full-time contract at Kilmarnock when I was 15, 16 year old. But I decided to stay on at school and went to university. Uh, and I think that was a good decision in my part. Uh, but then I went to Anne and I played a full season there and I was playing every week and loved it. And then I got the opportunity to go to uh, Newcastle United. And I went there for, I signed there for three years. Uh, but that was only because I was playing a week in week out at a senior fo football at Anne. and I think if I'd went with Kam obviously if I'd went with Kamanaka that, that opportunity wouldn't have arose but uh, obviously I quit university, went to Newcastle, was three, three years there and then got told I wasn't good enough I'd left university after two years so I was kind of I I didn't know what to do with myself kind of thing uh, so I went part time again with Gretna and then <laughs> and then my, there's not a lot of love for Gretna. Uh, so I went part time with that and went back to university, got my degree, and then Gretna went full time and I was I played with there. But I think KB's right what you're saying in terms of the Scottish football. There's financially, I don't think there's a lot of money in Scottish football at the minute. I think it comes in upward and downward curves where there's money one minute like when we maybe a few years ago there was more money in Scottish football and now the time for a, for young players to they've maybe got to get their chance more in, in Scottish football I think so now's the time for youth to come through and they'll maybe get more of their chances and they can okay. Has anybody else got any other questions? Yeah, hey, you had a, a great deal of success at uh, the Fairland gym, Mr. Mr. That's a start that wasn't going to be the, the, the greatest. You, you took that team and, and uh, you took them to great heights, and obviously to the SPL. Do you feel that uh, here at Queen of the South, the, the infrastructure that the directors are putting in, and with the, the youth development and management team like yourself, that uh, the chances there for Queen of the South to do something similar? Well, I certainly believe, and when I looked at the squad when I came here, that it's more than capable. You know, the biggest thing you've got to achieve is consistency to get that. In Dunfermline, it took me, I, I, I was one of the players in the dressing room, and I was just asked, asked to take caretaker man manager, and it was seven games. And in my mind, I was just babysitting, waiting on some experienced manager coming in. But we went on an unbeaten run of seven games and they offered me the job, so it was, it was, I was 36 at the time. And I still wasn't quite sure I wanted to stop playing. <laughs> uh, but I soon found out that I couldn't play and manage, it was impossible. I was starting to pick up too many calf injuries at that stage as well, so the body was giving up. But it took me two years to strip the team, because uh, when Stephen Kenny's team got relegated, he was allowed to keep that whole squad you know, when they were on, they were well, well paid. You know, it was at the time, it's not like the money now. It was, you know, it's decent money. But boys had two and three year contracts, you know, so it took two years to actually get, uh, to get the team I wanted to put on the park, a team that was hungry, you know, and motivated to, to play in that division, which wasn't the case with the boys that, you know, I'd inherited because they were used to playing Premier League every week, you know, in all their careers. There wasn't many that had 
you know, they'd maybe played a season in the first division and then been a Premier League player for five or ten years. So it was hard for a lot of them to, to adjust. Uh, you might ask why the hell that is, you know, they sh they're professional players and they should be, they should have come straight back up. But it wasn't a happy camp uh, and we, I took over on our second bottom, we finished fifth that season, progressed it to third the next season, third again, uh, and then before eventually winning it. So it wasn't built in a day, you know, it was, it was a lot of work. And sometimes when people see when you win a promotion, they think, oh, that's great, he's, he's won promotion. But for Jerry and I, it was, it was stripping a team and building a new team, you know, that was uh, the most important thing. And obviously, success is what, what punters demand. And there was a couple of sticky spells within that four years where the fans weren't happy uh, at times with results, and, and rightly so, you know, when, when clubs don't get the results then the manager feels it, you know, he, and that, that's, that's football, we all accept that. But, uh, from, from my point of view, it's a totally different scenario here in terms of what I've inherited, you know, because I've got a group of boys here that bust their gut. I've got to say they've been first class since the day we walked in the door. They really do give their lot every day in training and in the games. Yes, sometimes the quality might let us down, bad decision making, whatever, but that happens at every single level. It's how they, they respond to that and how we respond to that as a management team. You know, because we're all in it together. We're all, we're all wanting this, the same common goal, the same as yourselves. We want to be as successful as we can be. I think the difficulty this season for the, the support is understanding that you know this is a difficult league and I think with the success that, that Alan and Sandy and the boys had last year you know it, you think it's automatically going to keep on happening it, it doesn't work like that you know it is a tough tough league should we be better off than where we are now of course we should and we're, we're players merited to be better but we're failing at putting the ball in the net and, and maybe a few mistakes at the back have cost us in games you know, but there's been an honesty with that. It's not as if the boys are only giving their lot. The boys, every week they're giving their lot. So for me, that's the most important thing. And then we'll sit down, we'll analyse it, and we try and learn from mistakes. And when we get in the positions again, do better. That's, that, that's what it's all about. That's, that's what we see progress as a coaching staff, when the boys, the boys are learning for maybe not putting the ball away or whatever. But you know, I've, I've got every confidence in the group here that we'll have a good season. Yes, sir. Uh, just curious to know, would you prefer SPL 1 next year or SPL? Because there wouldn't be any difference between the competition and the attraction of what teams are visiting. Do you want us to be in SPL next year or in the championship? Oh, I want SPL, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, why are we in the league? You know, I, I would ask you that. We're not in the league to finish, you know, seventh, eighth. You know, we're, we're, not, we're in it to be as good as we can be. You know, nobody, nobody in our dressing rooms came out and said we're going to win the league. And You know, we're the newly promoted team. Do we expect to have a good season? Of course we do. But, you know, if you're in it, you're in it to, to do as well as you can. I, I can understand your question because you're obviously thinking Rangers next year, Hearts coming down. But I wasn't honest, if, if they win. No. <laughs> they, they, they'll win. They'll win. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, it's going to be a really, really strong league next year, the first division. A really strong league. So. It, there'll be some big gates in it as well, but there's a big gate every week in SPL, you know, so that's the thing. I think that's got to be the target. Uh, I would be lying if I had said differently to the players <coughs> that, you know, I think every team in this league, and you just need to look at the results week in, week out, look at them Martin today. You know, Dumbarton came here as well. You know, but we had a great chance to we really was through one on one with the goalie. They type of things. If you score first. Every time we scored first we've won the game. You know, that tells you how important <laughs> Well actually we've conceded a lot but come back and equalised. So but we've lost 
three or four goals late, you know, which has been disappointing. But as I say, sometimes individual mistakes happen. It's about how the players bounce back for that. That's that's the most important. How we as a team bounce back for it. And you can never question their character. Yeah. And just gonna read out one of the questions that's here, Jim, if you don't mind. Um it just kind of ties on to you saying I'm losing a lot of game with you know goals late in the game. Uh -huh. It says here that there would be appears to be uh, a difference in fitness levels between last season and now. Um, <laughs> has there been a significant change, you know, in fitness behaviour or the training regime, or you know, has there been a difference in that? Well, I think the best person to ask that would be the players because I wasn't involved in Sandy or, or Alan's training last year. Uh, what I will say is, when we train, we train hard. We, uh, my training sessions are an hour and a half. I try not to go over an hour and a half, but it's got to be as high tempo as possible, you know. And it's one thing that we do get we get high tempo training. Now you might think to yourself, an hour and a half. My God, what a short day that is. <laughs> but if you train, and you can, the boys will, the boys can speak about this in a minute. If you train at an hour and a half for a for a tempo, then after that your quality has gone because you have gave everything that's in your tank and it, if we were to, and I'll also put Ross on to explain a wee bit more about the scientific wording of it because <laughs> that's his remit uh, we wouldn't be as prepared for a Saturday now the late goals have came for individual mistakes lack of concentration now you can say well lack of concentration comes for tiredness Sometimes it's just football, sometimes that's the way it is. It's got absolutely nothing to do with fitness. But I'll, I'll put your passion on to the boys first. You can. Uh, yeah, obviously, I wasn't here last year, so I don't know what the, the training was like. Uh, in comparison to where I've been at other clubs, the training here has been, been excellent. Um, it's structured, quite, it's individually structured as well because of the work Ross does. Um, and he looks at everything you're, you're doing and you'll have chats with you during the week. Um, so everything's monitored and it's the, one of the best I've felt fitness wise and um, I think that's down to the, the style of training like the manager seen with a one and a half uh, with Jerry and the gaffer they don't it's really intense they don't let anybody cut any corners that it's always hard work it's always structured but uh, to answer the question if I don't think it's anything to do with fitness why the late goals as I say it's the best I've been feeling um, I think it's great to have it uh, specifically for yourself and being able to, to have a chat with during the week and work on certain things so I personally don't think it's down to fitness. No it's definitely not down to fitness. Uh, fitness this year I think the boys are as fit as I've ever been. Myself personally I'm as fit as I've ever been. Uh, training training's uh, superb this year. Training with Alan was really good as well but really similar actually it's really about high intensity and sharpness. Uh, on a Tuesday we always do a double session which was the same when uh, Alan and Sandy were in, uh, which is upper body and circuit kind of training. Uh, but I think the best person to ask would be Higgy who monitors everything with the heart rate belts, uh, we get fitness tested and our uh, fat tested, our uh, skin folds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I take it, it you know, also give us a scientific <laughs> word for that. Number of chains. But I think he'll tell you more because obviously he's had all the like bleep test results and everything like that. So he'd probably be able to compare to last year if he's got the results for last year as well. Before I pass you on, I think uh, you've got to remember you're up a level and in this league. Most of that, I'm right in saying, last year there was a lot of part-time clubs you're playing against. Whereas this year, everybody's in the same level. And the higher the level and the mistakes you make, you, you get punished more. So uh, that's the only way. Uh, that's, if you look at that, uh, for where they, uh, great last year when they win, the way they won the league, you know, they cruised it. But you know, everybody knows, when I mean, you got that level, it's going to be more difficult. So I'll put you on your own. Uh, well, we're really fortunate at the club that we do have the, the heart rate uh, telemetry system which allows us to, to monitor every single every single training session that the players will take part in. It's getting watched. It's not only getting watched by the coaching staff, but it's also we're actually monitoring how hard they're working in each session. Football is one of these unique sports, unlike most sports, that we need to try and get these players to peak once a week, sometimes twice a week. So we need to be very, very careful in how we train the players so that we're not going into the realms of overtraining them. 
because once we go down that road with players, and um, we've well, actually spoke about it recently about maybe we've, on a Tuesday session, we've maybe borderline, you know, we really, really pushed them, pushed them, pushed them. And I think the, the players will testify to that. The, the sessions that we do, they are only an hour and a half in duration, but the intensity that these guys are working at, they're working at between 90 and 95% of their max heart rate in these sessions, which is almost flat out, and we're asking them to produce maybe half an hour. 45 minutes of working that and the, the way that we would work out the training for the week is we'll have the heart rate data for these players from a game from a match situation so we know that in a match situation that they're probably performing maybe 45 minutes of high intensity work for a game therefore for our weekly training we'll make sure we're doing over and above that so we'll set the training session to produce maybe 60 minutes of high intensity work because then we know if they're only producing 45 minutes in a game we've got that extra 15 minutes should, should we need it uh, again, these sessions are getting monitored, they're getting near enough tailored individually each player. Uh, I think Beanie will testify, he's been dug up very, very recently <laughs> for, for no training hard enough. And it's, it's this kind of feedback that we give to the players that you know allows them to adjust their training session to get the, the optimum performance. At the end of the day, it's a results driven business, we, we understand that. And it's our job to try and get these players to peak every single day. Within football, there's, there's a whole host of components that we need to tackle. Uh, as Jerry stated, from this year to last year, it's, it's almost the only way we could compare it is going back to the, the testing data which we do, you know, and looking at them there. You can't compare what you see in the park because, as Jerry stated, last year we were a full time club in a part time league. Well, now we're in a full time club against full time, in a full time league playing against full time teams. So to, 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 to compare them and what you see, it's, it's almost incomparable, you can't really do it. So the way we would compare it is we go back to the testing data. Now my experience from the Premier League tells me that the, the data that the boys are producing through the testing is, is Premier League, Scottish Premier League uh, levels. If, if Maybe even more so beyond it. My experience at Hamilton Ackies was that these players here, can over the, 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 the whole group, are a fitter bunch than we were at Hamilton Ackies when, I, when we were up in the Premier League. So fitness wise, I think we're bang on. Uh, Tuesday sessions really, really hard. We're working double sessions, we're not doing strength conditioning work, we're doing prehabilitation work, trying to prevent injuries and touch wood. It's, it's something that's, that's actually went really quite well. You probably see us out at the start of the games with the therabands, activating pre-activation drills we call them. We're activating the muscles, we're waking up these muscles that the players are going to use in the games. Uh, so I'm in touch with the, the, the prehabilitation stuff that we've been doing is really well. We've only two sort of serious ish injuries which was Bunsey, which was a grade three tear, which there's nothing really can we do about that. And uh, McKenna who was you know it, it was an impact injury again, which is beyond our means of preventing it. So uh, training wise I think where the level of players are at now is is it, is it, there's really they're, they're performing really really well and myself and the rest of the coaching staff and Ross are, are really really happy with them. If we think they're underperforming, like I said Beanie will testify. They get they get asked to come and see me and I'll take them through it. And then we can what we can do is we can put something in place to alleviate any problems and get repeat on Saturday. I, I've got to say it was only for twi the first twenty minutes. Beanie was having a rest. <laughs> 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 The, the hour and ten after that, it was excellent. <laughs> I was trying to get me something, he was trying to get me off the edge. <laughs> Jim, does it bother you when you hear the crowd shouting at you from your down there and the team is not performing very well? I mean, I sit in the front of the stand here and I hear them behind me shouting sort of against them. I want to move strong and get what's in there, it's justified. Well, at the end of the day, I don't think the Queen's fans are any different from any other fans. You know, it, it's our job as a squad management to, to entertain the punters and give them something to get excited about, you know, and if we don't start well or if something happens, a goal goes in against us and then all of a sudden they start to get on the players' cases a wee bit, then maybe there's a wee bit of fear factor that can come in at times. Uh, I've got to say that I think the players this year, the only time they've looked slightly nervous was the Cowden Beast in the first half. I think other than that, you know, We've, we've risen above it and, and tried to play. Uh, does it bother me? I would prefer they were getting right behind the boys. Give me as much stick as you like, you know. But but get behind the, the, the team, you know, because 
there's nothing better than well done mate, and, and a roar for the crowd but you know they, they, I've got to say they're not any different for any other sets of supporters or things things haven't been great especially at home I fully understand that fully understand it. Um, we'll just take one more question and then we're going to stop for five minutes so yeah we go the ball apart from the Tuesday afternoon session where it's it's specifically gym based. gym based all we're training is with the ball we don't do anything other than possession exercises warm up Monday Thursday uh, sorry Mondays we do the ball skills you know stuff like that where, where people you know sometimes players used to come in and they think oh it's a wee touch and it's a wee volley and a wee this but it's all game related and as Beanie said, we demand that it's at a pace so that it's not just it's not just not game realistic, if you like. You know, the reason you've got to get that cone and volley it back quick and then get to the other side is because that's what you do in a game, that's how you lose a man. You know, a volley and then move, a half volley, a header, chest volley. So no, we practice all that. I'm very big on passing drills as well, but the boys will tell you the passing drills have got to be at a tempo and a standard or else we're not happy, you know, we'll We'll let them know that it's no good enough. It can't be just a, a wee a knock up and whatever. And funny, got a couple of weeks ago saying it's a right good sweat on you get at that, and and I said it's got to be like that because that's what it's going to be like the Saturday. It's no, you're not going to get a chance to, you know, take your time, take a touch, take a touch. You know, it's got to be that. So everything is worth the ball. The possession exercises, Tuesdays, four v fours, all game specific stuff. That you'll do on a Saturday, you know. We try to we try to mirror as much as possible on a Saturday. That what we what we do during the week is 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 like a game situation. Maybe expand it on a Thursday, where you're adding in more numbers and you're starting to think about the weekend. Oh, of, of, of course it is. Do you know the Do you know the biggest person that's frustrating for the player itself? The player, the, the player itself. No, no player wants to take a bad touch. No manager wants to make a bad decision. Mm. Let take Benio. <laughs> 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 if anything, but we try and encourage the players, play their strengths. Like Dan Michael, the manager said the word well. Go and do what you're good at. Go and beat a man. Go and take a man on. Go and cross the ball. We've got, we've got guys in the team like you know, Desi Young, the great pass of the ball, he's again well. You want him you want him to go on the ball. Young Ian McShane getting on the ball. Uh, sometimes there just seems to be that wee bit of inhibition for the player. Remember that's lack of confidence. Results. Yeah, young that, for example, you know, towards the end of the game, there's two minutes to go in the game, and two 0 up, passes the ball in and the eighteen yard balls but he's just probably had a fall. But you know, Desi's a sort of a, Desi's a sort of, he's confident on the ball, so he want to play that pass, he's confident he can make that pass. And it's all about confidence with players, of course it is. You know, it, it, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you've not got the confidence to go out there and produce, then, you know, the, you, you don't see that ability. But as it says, all of us training, we encourage the players, do what they're good at, go and take man on, pass the ball, go and beat a man, go and get the ball into the box, go and go in there, get a strike, get goal. You know, we, we don't ask the players to do things they're not capable of doing. I mean, they're all professional players and they're at the club for a reason, because they've got ability and skill. So, I mean, we don't have to ask the guys, that, you know, they, they know they're good at they, but we just try to encourage it. If we don't see it enough, then we'll, we'll step in, the manager will step in. See, I wanted you go and take him on. Go and do it, go and... And they'll do it. But as I say, nobody deliberately gives the ball away, it falls over the ball. Maybe, I mean, again. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's probably over space. No, because... <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. I mean, oh. 
maybe a year or two and I think what you need to remember <coughs> I take any supplement um, a supplement is only a supplement it's there to, to supplement a, a balanced healthy diet and I, I would always be wanting to promote I would rather our players get the majority of their nutrition from you know maintaining a balanced healthy diet rather than from something like Herbal Life uh, but I do understand that, that people do live like, hectic lifestyles um, and sometimes don't have the, the, the time, uh, or just you know, the, the time just to prepare, you know, proper nutritional meals. So, I mean, if it if it fits in within your lifestyle, then I'm not, I'm never going to tell anybody to stop taking it. Uh, we were fortunate enough. One of the first things I done when I came on board was I actually got a, a sports nutrition company on board for the club who who do offer supplements to the players uh, at discounted rates. So. I mean, it's, it's, I do, do, do promote it in a way because it's more a convenience thing of where we train. It, it, we, you've got an optimum window when you, you finish training and you finish a game to get the, the correct nutrition into the body to, to speed up the recovery process. So supplements kind of come into their own there. But um, it's, I would prefer it if it was, you know, it was through a balanced, healthy diet. So herbal life, it's, it's there's, there's a lot to be said about it. You know, it's probably one I wouldn't promote myself, but I, that's, my, that's my personal thing, I think if you look at a lot of the scientific studies coming out the way we have in life, um, there's a lot of it saying that it can maybe produce uh, some liver damage and stuff like that, but uh, a lot is unproven, I mean, it's, it's one of these things either, if you want to take it and it helps you, if you about your lifestyle, by all means take it. Uh, yeah, smoke it. I know the seriousness though with Herbal Life, it, it's came to light a lot of players are actually talking about it, you know, when they're asked about the fitness regime and they actively say <coughs> I'm on Herbal Life, do you feel that's maybe they get paid to advertise or do you think they're, they're genuinely that excited? Well, I think you, you can probably find them in, in a lot of the players that actually take it are actually selling it on the side as well and making some money off it, so in a way, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a way or a, a, a means of advertising it. I, I do see on some of the social media stuff, those from other clubs advertising it and stuff like that, which, you know, I, in my opinion, I don't think it's right, but it's who, who it's just money at the end of the day, isn't it? It's just a bit of a Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot, a lot of the, the, the football players playing it because Lionel Messi and David Beckham were endorsed it and that. But I mean, if you give anybody enough money, they'll, they'll put their name yeah. there. Doesn't mean they're yeah. taking it, but that's nah, it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. If somebody wants to take it, I don't need to take it. Good. Is anybody else got another question? Yep. Over the last few weeks, the guys have been playing, I think they've been playing brilliantly, they've been playing as a team, they've been playing some really great football, but they've just not been getting the results. How do you motivate them to keep them? <coughs> you can't be able to do that. You know, I'm, I'm very big on uh, video technology. Uh, we're really fortunate that we have Malcolm and Drew who, who do the filming here. Uh, and we also use a company called Elite Sports Analysis who I will, I will study. Malcolm emails me the game as well as getting a copy of the DVDs for Drew and stuff. And I'll go through the game on a Sunday or sometimes a Saturday night if it's not any plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and and then on the Monday the company Elite Sports Analysis breaks it all up into categories that I have set for myself and I like to go through that with the players. Uh, sometimes you do it individually, sometimes we do it as a group. But the case is when we've played well and we've not got what we've deserved, it's important that the boys see a lot of the good things that we've done, even though we've not won the game. When uh, when I was a player, I'll not mention names in terms of managers, but some of the managers used used to use it as a tool where they would absolutely hammer you and you come out the come out the room feeling as low as a snake's belly. Whereas I just don't see the point in that. I think it's about trying to educate the players and try to make, make sure that if they're in that position, similar to what I talked about earlier on, where you're trying to, hopefully if they're in that situation again, whether it's putting the ball in the net or clearing their lines, that uh, you know, they, they learn from it. You know, and, but I think it's important that players see positives for their good play. You know, we've done that quite a few times this year, lads, haven't we? Mm -hmm. uh, and for, What's that, Beanie? <laughs> 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 uh, I like Beanie speaking a wee minute. <laughs> we had a wee chat during the week, didn't we, Paul? It was a positive, so it was alright. <laughs> but uh, no, I think uh, to, to answer your question, the biggest thing is is to sit down and show them, and, and, and you know, we'll go again. And it's it's important because then. As much as they think they might have done well on the game, if you show them it in black and white, here you go, look at that lads, look how good that was. We just didn't make quite of the finishing product or whatever. <coughs> we made a, an individual mistake or we've no match to run for a goal and it's cost us. You know, so let's learn for that and try and make sure it doesn't happen again. Of course it will happen again. Yeah. You know, it's human nature. And despite what you might hear from a lot of the people in the crowd, there are just as many people who understand that and know that it's just part of the game and that uh, they are doing what they, the best they can out there. Yeah, that's right. Without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, just a question I've got written down here, uh, Jim. Uh, after playing uh, you know, several different pairings for the back four, uh, do you feel like you've you know, made a breakthrough or do you feel like you've got the right four at the back now? Well, I think we've got, <laughs> well, I think, I think we've got six good defenders. You know, at, at our club, uh, people can turn around and say, "Well, it's this back four, or it's that back four, or that pairing's better than that pairing." You know, the bottom line is, you're given the jersey; it's up to you to keep it. <coughs> you know, so it's, your performance will keep you in the team. If you're not <coughs> performing, and I think it's not good enough, then you're going to be removed for the side. Uh, we've had good results lately. Now we've put away chances. <coughs> now, Maybe the focus wouldn't be on the defence if we'd have put away more of those chances in previous games. You know, because we've not we've not took the, we've never took the hammer off MD. So it's not as if you can say one back lot's not done their job. I think uh, recently in the last few games the back four have been excellent, they've done really well. You know, but it's not just the back four. The defending starts for the front. If you've seen how hard how hard the, the two strikers work today with the with the three behind them. And Desi Young doing the defensive screening side in the job. You know, that, that's where the defending starts from. You win and lose as a team. It just shouldn't it just fall on the back four because you concede goals. Uh, See, I was just going to say if you, if you look at our bench today, you know, six the six outfield players were all probably started the season. Or around around about the, the beginning of the season. And now, you know, you get that back a day. So the competition is, the boys who started the game a day know that they'll, they'll need to perform to keep their jersey. You know, Ryan can feel unfortunate if we're left out now. Uh, Andy Dowie's another one. Guys like that, I say. But I'm sure, you know, they, they'll be working so hard and they'll be, they'll be ready when their chance comes because they'll get their chance again. If, you know, that's what you're always hoping for. But the thing is, for the, the, when you look at the competition, which is good for us now, because it puts the pressure on them to go and perform. And if they're not performing, the manager will say, well, wait a minute here, right? I've got players here that's ready to step in. I mean, they get their opportunity, they know they'll be ready, but, you know, a club our size, you know, is great for us when we, as I say, as we look to the bench today, as much as we've got young boys there who've been on the bench the last few weeks, we need we need that experience. And we've got these, we've got good, good players at the club who are all vying for the one position. So, uh, it can only augur well for the, you know, for the future of the club when you've got 
a squad of players like that? Play the cheers. Do you like something, Jim? Compared to what the lady was asking, Andy Gorham told me I was the most unpopular person amongst the players at uh, Palmerston because the manager had them in on the Monday and showed them the tape and gave them what for uh, just see the difference in the manager. So I'd like to explain that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Jim, did you have a question there? Do you like the new system with seven substitutes? Uh, I mean, does that not mean that they get really disappointed? Four of them at least have got no chance of coming on. Well, as I remember, sorry, I sorry, remember sorry. Like, I remember he had 11 players, so they got a broken leg, they went out in the left wing. You <laughs> 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 must have been some team. I must say, seven substitutes. Are they not going to get off with this? They've got no chance of coming on. They're going to just. Well, I think, uh, I think a player would rather be sitting on the bench than sitting in the stand. At least he's got half a chance of coming on through there. Uh, as a manager point of view, it's great for me because we, we've got options. You can send it all seven options, do you? Of course you do. Why? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll be really honest with you and, and I'll tell you how I pick a bench. I try to balance it throughout the team and what positions we can cover. Whoever started the... the what flexibility I have with the start and 11 and where I can move players within that if I need to and the players that are on the bench, that's the way most managers will pick a bench sometimes a player might be on the bench one week and they'll be on it the next week because you know you might just well, feel Andy that Dewey last week. well I know Andy Dowie, Andy Dowie picked up an injury in training, Andy oh, Dowie had done his groin uh, <coughs> so but no from my point of view and I think from the players point of view You'd rather be in the bench than in the stand, would you not? Yeah. Right. Definitely. Well, at least you've got half a chance of getting on. Uh, yeah, that's right, and I think. No, it's just one of those happy keep the players happy a lot, right? Not many. No players happy when they're sitting on the bench, regardless if it's three or if it's seven or ten or whatever it is. You know, the bottom line is they want to be out in that part. You don't have a lot of men in the pitch. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even although Barton tried otherwise, did he? <laughs> <laughs> that was really interesting today. Because the guy that came off had already been booked and he left the pitch with permission. He yeah. should have been booked again in a red car. Yeah, Alan Moore was saying that after yeah. the game. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's a disaster. I think, do you know, I know it's the rules, but I think we can be really, really officious at times. You know, and there's somebody sitting in the stand making sure the referee does his job or they mark him down and then he, he might get put to the second division next week if he's not doing everything to the letter of the law. But I think I've got a lot of our problem is we don't apply common sense at times. You know, my God, one sub's coming on and one's coming off. If he takes a foot step before the one comes off, he gets a booking. And, it's the first time I've seen that, so I've got to see it in 40 years. It's not something I like. Just, uh, just coming to a, a question I've got here as well, you mentioned injuries. Uh, Cal Antel has obviously sustained an injury. Um, are we likely to see him again this season? Well, he'll definitely be fit in a few weeks' time. Uh, he's He got a bad, bad kick on the bottom of his foot and we were unsure whether it was broken or not, but the X-ray came back. We thought he'd maybe done his meta tarso, but he's still getting pain, Ross, isn't he? Just um, when he's kicking a ball from the deck. So he's, he's still, it's like kind of nerve-related thing that he's still getting a pain from, but no, we'll definitely see him, that's for sure. Has anybody got another question? Yes, sir? Is this probably going to be what you're saying here, the goalkeepers with young Jim Arkins, I mean, how do you feel, how do you think that boy feels when he sees Antel get injured and he thinks I've got a wee chance here and he bring in a loan signing and he's back to where he was before, Nick will ever get a chance? I think Jim Atkinson's a good young keeper. I don't think he's ready to play first team at this precise moment. That's the reason I went and got a goalkeeper in all honesty. So, as a manager, you know, I've made a decision uh, to bring in Callum. He's had quite a hard time, you've got to say that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was go and stick a kid in. So I went and got somebody with a wee bit more experience than Big Xander, who'd been out alone and played a, he's got a wee bit more years to him. Uh, and I think he's done well. I 
famous actors, don't you? <laughs> but J Jim, Jim's still young, you know, Jim's learning the game and Jim's got a chance at like MDLs, but at this precise moment, and I sat down Jim and told him that, look, I don't think you're ready at the minute, so that's why I'm getting another keeper in. Okay. Anybody else would like to ask a question? No, I've got one here. Um, yeah, two. I'll come back. Would you sign another goal? <laughs> would, would you be looking to sign another goal? Probably sign it. You're like, can you get this guy alone? But would you sign another goal? Yeah, I think I think we'll definitely we'll be look looking to sign another goalkeeper. The in the window. So the confidence in the, in the defence and everything has been so different in the last few weeks. Mm. Yeah, but you've got. It's a shame. Yeah, but, but, the bo is, but, but the bottom line is, Callum's not any different for an outfield player. Yeah. If you have a couple of poor games or a hard game, mm -hmm. you've got to bounce back. You've, you know, you get left out of the team, somebody else comes in, they play, but you've got to get yourself back, get your confidence back, and get ready to go again. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, we're professional uh, people, and that that's the nature of our business. You're, you're not going to play well all the time, you're going to have hard times. You know, so the, the kids made a few mistakes. He knows that. We know that. You know, but the last thing we need is, is you know, no believing in the boy that he's going to come good again. You know, because <coughs> uh, Billy Dodd said him last year at East Fife, and Billy Brown also recommended him to us. We had him on trial for four games, and although he didn't have major work to do in the four games, he still was competent enough and done well and fitted in with the group. So. Just because he's had a difficult start here doesn't mean to say that the boys the boys finished, you know, so as and that's our job is to pick him up and himself to get his confidence back and he'll be given every opportunity here to do that. So would you be looking at putting Jim out on loan? If I was to get another keeper, yes, uh, your your younger kids uh, that's that's what you would look to try and do if you had say if you had three if you had three, then you could look to try and put the youngest one out and want to get experience. <coughs> it's not always as easy to put goalies out and want, or any young player out and want. You need somebody to want to take them as well, you know. So, so that's the thing. And just on the same subject, the transfer window. I've got a question here that says, that would you be looking to bring in another striker in January? I'd be looking to bring in another striker, a defender, a wide player. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would, uh, I'll be like any manager, you always want to add to your squad and what you've got. The bottom line is, you only add players if they're good enough to improve your squad. There's no point signing somebody who's just the same. So it's, it's, it's the manager's job to identify talent, speak to the powers that be, and if there's funds available, then we try and do that. But I'll reiterate, we've got good players here, so uh -huh. it'll need to be good good players to, to come and compliment that. Yeah. Uh, has anybody else got a question they'd like to ask? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I was just wondering, <coughs> talking to young players, um, is there a fear amongst managers to play young players? You know, is it, when you especially as you say, you're stepping up a level, is it easier to say, well, we need experience, rather than saying, well, we'll just go with young players. Is there a fear that you can take that risk in Scottish football? Do you know, I think that's a great question because uh, we, we get, when we won promotion to the Premier League, I, I was too loyal, far too loyal. Uh, there was a young kid, Sean Byrne, who was kind of doing really well in the reserves and stuff and, and that. It's a regret of both KB and I's that we never put him in. Uh, and we kept going with experience. And we were in a relegation battle and you're saying to yourself, is it the right time to bring this kid in? But we should have just been braver and just said, look, stick him <coughs> in. Because the, the rear guard that were there weren't doing the job. <coughs> so I think I think that's a good point. I also spoke to Stephen Presley when he was forced to make all the cuts at Falkirk. And he said he would never have went down the youth route in the following season with the youth route, they done really well and he got loads of plaudits as a manager. But that's a youth system 
that was 10 years in the making and a lot, a lot of money went into it at Falkirk, a lot of money. That was under John Hughes who started all that, they had a fantastic, Chris Mitchell was one of their kids, they had a fantastic facility there at Stirling Uni where they were getting unbelievable, you know, uh, sports science, everything that was tip top and they spent lots of money in that. So there was a batch of these kids coming through at every level, not just like one or two, because if you get one or two kids one through a season, you're doing well. You're doing well with that. You're not going to get three and four kids every season at Disney. It's no, it's no as easy as that. And again, then it will come, it'll all come down to finance. If you've not got the finance to attract players, then a lot of clubs will have to blood kids. But uh, I think you can look at our team now, and <coughs> we've got several young, young players here that are starting to get regular football. <coughs> We're obviously Holt, he's playing regular the last couple of seasons, you've got McShane who's come into the fold this season, young Riley, uh, he's, he's playing games, you know, Carmichael's come through the system as well, so this is predominantly a club that has, has blood young players. Anybody else got a question? Yeah, Jamie, you asked a question for the sports scientists. How's it going? The mad scientists. I'm <laughs> Does he recommend to relieve the stress of watching Queen's four pints or eight pints? Ball of vodka. I think, I think one of the questions I've answered right here was um, for the players, do the players like playing on AstroTurf? Do they, do they prefer it? And um, probably do, do you have any you know, issues with the players coming to play on our pitch? And also do you think that gives you an advantage? I don't think nowadays that there is an advantage for, for teams coming down. Um, in the last few years, a lot of boys have been used to everybody's basically training in it. Um, training it. I think we've got 12 games or something grass this season, which isn't very many, so I don't think there's any advantage for, for us or other teams coming here. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of that sort of stuff, but I think that's more to do with my age, and I've just been used to growing up with grass. Um, boys starting to use players now are playing an Astro. I think boys now coming through are more used to playing an Astro turf. I think from a young age that's that's what used to, which is understandable. Clubs have have got the Astro in place, so personally I prefer grass, but um, that's just an age thing. Guff will be the same. He's older, so. I was going to say Guff can give us a more experienced answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good for you. I prefer grass as well. Uh, I think we are sure tough. You tend to pick up more injuries, but I think that obviously puts the prowess on Higgy and uh, Ross to, to obviously do all the rehab and uh, glute activation work that he preaches on about so much. Uh, <laughs> no, I prefer I prefer uh, grass a lot more, and it's nothing I think I've done better than a, gra a good grass park. But obviously, that's a more realistic option for this club. What kind of injuries, what you said you pick up more injuries, what kind of injuries do you tend to pick up as opposed to being a Because it's obviously it's a more solid surface, you tend to pick up more like uh, core area injuries right. in terms of your hip, your right. groins, your knees. Yeah. 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 <coughs> do you feel you've got control Guff, when you're playing the likes of that? Is it no smoother to play on his grass? Well, the way the, the gaffer wants us to play it, it should suit us the way we want to play because we want to play out from the back. Yeah. And it should suit that. We should take out obviously the, the baubles and stuff. <coughs> well, obviously, which grass parts. Uh, but. Uh, same baubles in that because it does tend to bounce around a screen plate times. Yeah, it's. It looks like a crowd from Houston. No, it does. 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 It I think the biggest thing is, what the Beanie was saying, is the older generation of player, you know, I hated AstroTurf as a, when we trained on it at Dundee United, but it was a really, really poor surface. The AstroTurfs these days, the ones that are getting laid down now, are, are far more forgiving and far more uh, softer on the body. And you only need to look to the Champions League now and you're starting to see Celtic a couple of games this season, you know, uh, on AstroTurf pitches. You know, so it's FIFA two star is what what that is, and that that's top of the range stuff. You know, Falkirk's and, and Hamilton's and is the same. I I'm the same as the, the lads. I don't think there's anything to beat 
a right good surf, grass surface and the night we went to Tyne Castle we, we were exceptional and we were really unfortunate not to go through that night mm. but the pitch that night was just it's immense wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It, was, it was fantastic <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, that was a deluge of rain, wasn't it, for about two hours. I'm surprised it went ahead. And actually that, uh, the, the, the goal came from that. Yeah. Because yeah. any other time, Xander's pammed it, it's going to skid out the park. It's caught in the wee muddy bit. Because when the boys were doing shooting before the goal, uh, the game, it was sticking in that patch all the time. Uh, so, that can try it against us that one. So. Has uh, anybody else got a question you'd like to ask? Yes, sir. How do you find with the uh, SFA signing on to UEFA's financial fair play that we all heard about in recent years? Why should the likes of Rangers win a Sunday pub league, the third division, with a 14 and a half million of debt? You know, there's, there's financial fair play in that. You know, because you know we're going to be competing against that next year if we if we don't go up. Well, obviously, financial fair play has been really talked about big, winning, yeah. big down in England and all the clubs. Been down at Bristol City last year with, with Derek McInnes and Tony Doherty. They were having to make major plans then. Even when you were signing players, you were having to look at right. What happens if we go down this year? What happens if we don't do this? Don't do that because. There was boys there that were on fantastic money, you know, life changing money in the championship. You know, some of these boys were on scary figures. But that was all going to stop. And you had to you work within whatever the, the financial fair play stated in terms of your revenue and you know, you can't your expenditure and all the rest of it. So it does does it I think it should come in. Uh, I think it's got to it's got to happen. For the future of the game, both down there and up here, you know, I understand what you're saying about Rangers' debt and and all the rest of it. I don't really want to get involved in the politics uh, of that that side of things. We've just got to make sure that we're running our club properly, which is it definitely is, as we spoke about earlier on. We're in a very good place, we're very healthy, and we're doing things the correct way. I mean, you're saying McCoy's done 800,000, you know that's. Oh, that's double your salary. I was going to say it's only half of me. <laughs> 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 that's it. That's their money. Is there anything anybody else would like to ask? Just ask them. Of course. What do you think of scoring numbers? Why, how long are you 99? 99? That is ridiculous. I think, uh, I think that's, that's just down. Just the striker, he's a striker, so he wants obviously the number 90. Nine, that means he feel, feels important type thing, you know. Some boys, uh, I remember. Sorry. Yes, it will be. Yeah. Next year it'll be brought in. Can we just have one to 25? <laughs> I once had a player who uh, wasn't going to sign his contract uh, unless we changed his number. He wasn't quite as forceful as that, but he, he was pleading for number seven when I'd always had him number eleven. And sometimes players get super superstitious and precious about these things, but if it makes them feel precious on the park and special on the park, then. You know, then so be it. Uh, I'll no name his name, Joe Cardo, but <laughs> uh, I've got to say that was in the Premier League and he performed very well that season, so who's to say there's no something on? <coughs> Twelve guff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, it's a joke. When's life going back to play? Give them a number that's like their age. <laughs> some what, what young, some are younger than us. How will age react? <laughs> right, so um, if nobody's got any other questions, I just maybe ask the guys, you, you want to maybe say a wee bit about what you're going to do going forward for the rest of the season? Are Keep winning. Are we closing the statement, maybe? Well, what, 
what we will do is we'll be, we'll be trying to build on what we've done today. That's always the aim, is to try and get some consistency. I think that's what's been lacking this season. Uh, we're pleased for my, for my money, it's definitely merited more points. But the bottom line is, you are where you are because you deserve to be there, whether that's your own feelings and putting the ball away or, or in front, at the back end. you know. But I think we've got a, a very good squad here. And I feel it's a squad that can definitely get in that top half of the table and push for a playoff spot. Well, obviously, you know, we've got great belief in the squad of players we've got here. And I know you're saying, are, they, are we going to bring players in in the, the transfer window? If that happens, it happens, as I say, but as the manager says, it's got to be players that come in and complement the squad. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a very good squad of players here. We work with them day in, day out, you know. Obviously, all the boys have been here using them from last year, and they're probably one of the best squad of players we've worked with. You know, you, you're talking about motivation. I think you asked for motivation, early, uh, motivation <coughs> earlier. But these boys motivate themselves. You know, they know if we come in and we lost the game on a Saturday, they're no day. You know, we all take it, we all feel it. But see Monday, these boys are ready to go again. And who knows? You know, as it says, I don't think there's. I think one, I think Hamilton Rackies are the only team maybe has looked better on us in, in a match day. Uh, obviously the game we played them, uh, Douglas Park. But I think everybody's capable of beating one another in this. You know, there's not much in this league. And there's very, you know, there's fine margins. I, I'm sure, honestly, these boys, we've all got aspirations to uh, try to get, you know, get promotion, whether it happens this year. Or, but the, the thing is, we're all aiming for the, aim for the same thing and trying to bring success to this club. Just to read it, I think the boys have, have worked really hard to see that out in the park. We've worked hard for each other, eh, for the manager and KB and for the whole management team. It's a great squad of boys, the spirit's really good. Um, we perhaps haven't started well results wise, but we're still not far away. I think another win next week, we're, we're right back in the mix and who knows where we can go. But the boys have worked so hard for each other, for the management. Eh, we're actually enjoying their season, even though results haven't been great. So. I don't think we're far away from really pushing on and going on to have a really good successful season. I just just the same as being there, obviously the boys are all focused on what to do as well as they can and you can only plan for the best, you know, you can only prepare and every day we prepare and the manager tries to prepare us as best we can for a Saturday. The one thing I'll say is it's a uh, the best uh, group of boys I've been involved with, the team spirit and amongst the boys is incredible. Every one of the players uh, gets on with each other. There's no malice between any of the players. They all like each other, and and to be honest, that's rare, really rare. Right. Yeah, just to <laughs> <I think laughs> reiterate the, the manager and the, the boys have said there that like, without I can honestly hold my hand up and say the, the group that we have got now, probably apart from being probably. <laughs> Probably are, probably the, one, one of the best groups that I have actually I've ever worked with. Anything, any task that we set down in front of them, you know, they, they give 110% to it. So hopefully we can keep everybody as fit as possible and, and give the, the manager uh, selection headaches for the rest of the season. And, and hopefully it's going to be onwards and upwards and have, we're going to have a successful season at the club. Just the same as Higgy, just as long as they keep the injury list down, <laughs> give the manager a selection problem, then that's all we can really do. Keep the manager fit to be beanie at the table, then it's <laughs> not. Yeah, so I, think, I think we're all in mutual agreement that we, we, we all want the, th the same things out of the club and uh, the management are, and the players are obviously doing their best and uh, I'm sure we'll all come together and say that we'll support them the whole way, uh, hopefully to the playoffs um, and we'll see us in the SPL next year but... Uh, <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> but um, no, I just want to say a big thanks to the, the top table and guys for answering the questions. Thank you.